The last portion of the foot and ankle regional exam entails the lateral foot and ankle. And while there are a number of different uh, entities uh, that can be involved, if we do this in a systematic exam, uh, one should be able to come up with a proper diagnosis. First and foremost, one needs to palpate for any tenderness of the distal fibula. Uh, this, if there is tenderness, they, this may be indicative of a fracture or severe sprain uh, involving the anterior talofibular ligament or the calcaneofibular ligament. In order to test for instability of the ankle after an ankle sprain, the distal tibia is uh, held firmly and then gentle anterior shucking of the ankle joint known as the anterior drawer is performed. This typically is performed in plantar flexion to test for stability of the ATFL or anterior talofibular ligament and in a neutral position for the calcaneofibular ligament. Additionally, the, the heel is cupped and inversion uh, the ankle is performed to check for competency of the calcaneofibular ligament. Tenderness along the inferior syndesmosis may denote a high ankle sprain and in some cases uh, may also be indicative of a high fibular fracture. Uh, this is present when there is a pronation external rotation uh, injury to the ankle. In order to test for syndesmotic involvement, one can perform a squeeze test of the inferior syndesmosis or an external rotatory exam by stabilizing the distal tibia and then externally rotating the talus within the mortise of the ankle. The perineal tendons sit in a groove behind the lateral malleolus and as we had previously mentioned on physical exam are isolated by plantar flexing and everting the foot. You can nicely see the perineals uh, in this examination. One should also have a patient rotate their foot both uh, clockwise and counterclockwise to evaluate the competency of the retinaculum of the perineals. Moving just inferior and distal to the distal fibula, uh, patients that have tenderness after an ankle injury should be evaluated for a possible lateral process of the talus fracture. Uh, there is typically uh, tenderness just superior to the sinus tarsi which is the entrance to the posterior facet of the subtalar joint. Additionally, one should also uh, check for a, a tender calcaneonavicular uh, coalition, uh, which may also present as a rigid flat foot, as we had previously mentioned with the middle facet. The sinus tarsi sits directly inferior to the ankle joint and as we mentioned is the entrance to the posterior facet of the subtalar joint. This is typically mistaken for ankle tenderness, however, is separate from the ankle joint. Any tenderness uh, in this region should alert the examiner to the possibility of inflammation secondary to an inflammatory arthritis or uh, the presence of subtalar arthrosis or in some cases, posterior impingement from a symptomatic ostrigonum, which may create referred pain in this region. Lastly, uh, pain in the lateral aspect of the ankle may be associated uh, with a fracture of the fifth metatarsal base. A true avulsion injury would entail avulsion of the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal secondary to contracture of the lateral plantar ligament or the perineus brevis at its insertion on the, the base. This needs to be uh, evaluated as well for possible Jones fracture, which is a fracture at the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction. 
This type of fracture at the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction needs to be immobilized uh, so that we reduce the risk of non-union of the fracture. A true avulsion fracture at the base can typically be treated with symptomatic protection. This completes the examination of the foot and ankle.